a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. It's always a pleasure to welcome David Robinson to the program. And today, David is going to be taking a glance at the UK. The British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, surprised not only the media, but also many of his own MPs by announcing there would be an early general election on the 4th of July. Christian social commentator David Robinson is back with us to discuss this, and he thinks Brits might be eager for this election. If you don't know David Robinson, he writes for newspapers, magazines. He's the author of a number of books, including The Dawkins Letters and Engaging with Atheists. He's also the minister of Scots Kirk Presbyterian Church in Newcastle, New South Wales. And he writes a blog called TheWeFlee.com. And his latest book is called Seek. And as I said earlier, it's our great pleasure to welcome David Robinson to the program today. David, welcome. Yeah, it's good to be with you. Good to be with you, my friend. And yeah, we have a sudden snap election in the UK on the 4th of July. Yeah, we do. Um, and uh, it's yeah, it's a surprise. Uh, my interest in it was, well, partly I'm still a UK citizen and I'm still eligible to vote. Although given the postal service, I don't think a postal ballot will, will get there in time. So I'll probably vote by proxy. But I was reflecting on just, not just in the UK, but in Australia, sometimes it's very difficult for Christians to think, well, who can I vote for? And lots of people. So I wrote an article called None of the Above, which occasionally I have done that. I've gone in to vote and it's not compulsory in the UK to vote, but I feel morally obliged to. And sometimes I've just spoiled my paper by writing None of the Above. (laughs) Which is your democratic right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I've done protest votes before. I remember once, I hope the listeners won't be too horrified, voting for the Socialist Workers Party, which is kind of extreme left Marxist, knowing they would never get elected. But I just thought, I actually quite like the guy who was standing and I just thought, I can't vote for any of the others. And if I'd thought his policies had any chance of being instigated, I wouldn't have voted for him either. But that was a protest vote. But I decided, um, I, I find myself now... Uh, I, I don't vote for parties anymore. Um, and I find myself uh, looking at the individual candidates and saying, OK, this is the one who most aligns with my values. And um, so I found myself having voted um, in UK terms, conservative, Labour, Scottish nationalist, Liberal Democrat, even voted Green once. So I wouldn't do that again. Um, and uh, in Australian terms, you know, I don't vote here, but... Labour, Liberal, um, National, various lots of the other parties as well. I think it's hard for Christians, to be honest. Well, it is, and I think what you're talking about is it's worldwide. I think you'll find most of the Western democracies, the major parties that dominate, they do tend to be, A, similar, and B, very um, removed from the average Christian's values. Would you agree? Yeah, um, I, I think they are in, in a lot of things. I mean, it, it, it varies, and it varies sometimes um, with individuals. I mean, uh, as a Christian, I have a strong view of the sanctity of life, and it's very difficult for me to vote, for example, for somebody who um, what wanted, say, abortion on demand up to nine months or supported euthanasia. But at the same time, I'm also uh, a, a Christian who believes that uh, there's a responsibility of the government to help the poor and so on. And I would find it quite difficult to vote for somebody who just didn't care about that at all. Uh, so, I mean, no one's going to say they don't care about it, but y- you know what I mean? Yep. So I, I think it's, um, it, you know, I-, I know there won't be a perfect party. It's very interesting. In the Netherlands, uh, one of the churches I was connected with in the Netherlands, or my denomination was connected with in the Netherlands, basically had a Christian political party, and it has six MPs. Um, and I know in there's been various attempts in the UK to try and have a Christian political party. Um, I know here in Australia, there's uh, the family party. I've spoken at their uh, conference and so on. And it may be that there are possibilities w- with those kinds of things. Although I, I struggle with the concept of a Christian political party because there are aspects about policy which Christians will disagree with on which there is you know, no clear Christian 
uh, viewpoint. So, for example, um, back in the UK, should Scotland be an independent country or should the UK belong to uh, the European Union or in Australia, should we be part of AUKUS or, you know, there, there are a whole range of different things that you can't say this is the Christian view. Uh, Christians will have different views. But on the other hand, there are as, there are some things uh, what we tend often to call moral issues, but I think that's slightly wrong. I think um, there are lots of moral issues, but uh, where you know, it, it's it's for me. I, I would find it almost impossible as a Christian to vote for somebody, for example, who is overtly racist. You know, who was who said. I mean, they probably wouldn't be allowed to stand. But even if the even if they were, I just would find it very, very, very difficult. Uh, I, I don't think I would. But equally, I find it extremely difficult to vote for somebody who um, uh, is kind of extreme pro-abortionist. So, yeah, it's it's a struggle. I, I mean, I, I remember a BBC producer once telling me that he said that he thought that fifty um, percent of the electorate. Uh, in Scotland, sh- shared roughly similar views to mine from different backgrounds, and that w- weren't represented at all on mainstream media or in the mainstream political parties. And I suspect that's the same in Australia. That a lot of us feel that, well, who's speaking for Christian values? Um, maybe sometimes as well, some of the people who do speak for Christian values were a bit embarrassed by. That can be another thing. You know, you get someone saying, "I'm speaking for Christian values," and you kind of go, "Well, I kind of wish you weren't." Um, but you know there are some faithful Christians who speak up, and uh, in Australia, I'm amazed at how many Christians actually are Christians. Uh, I've just been finished just finished reading Scott Morrison's memoir, which, um, whatever you think about his politics, his, his memoir clearly indicates someone who has a real love for the Lord, and I was impressed with that. Yeah, yeah, he he did seem genuine in his faith. Uh, like I said, notwithstanding his political um, actions and decisions and leadership, but. Uh, David, you did write an article which appeared recently in Christian Today, and it's all about the UK general election. What were the key points you made in that article? Well, I think saying that what I've kind of been saying, I tend to vote for the candidate, not the party. Uh, I uh, suggested that our political parties tend to be run by technocrats or kids just out of school. And that it's very hard to tell the difference between the main parties, that they're all different shades of beige, um, or as, as I put it, off the edge of the rainbow. Um, I, I was suggesting where does somebody who's seen as economically slightly left wing and socially conservative go to vote? Um, I pointed out things like I support the healthcare service, but don't support um, the NHS aborting babies or potentially euthanizing old people. Uh, you know, th- th- I support the equality of. Uh, women but despair at politicians who don't know what a woman is. I don't think I would ever vote for a politician who didn't know what a woman was. Remember in North Sydney, um, I couldn't vote, but I was speaking to some of the people at the last election and one candidate, doesn't matter, I was speaking to their supporters and said, can your candidate tell me what a woman is? And they said, no, probably not. I said, well, there's no way I would vote for somebody who couldn't do that. Well, you it's know, a worry, isn't it? Because most four-year-olds know the difference between male and female. It's uh, it's pretty yeah. easy to identify, especially at the beach. So, yeah, it, it, it is a worry. And so do you feel like there's a bit of a weariness with democracy across the Western world now that people are just a bit tired with our democratic system? Well, I think there's two dangers. And, I mean, our democratic system, I think, is, you know, what is it, Churchill, who said that democracy is the worst of all forms of government apart from all the others, you know, <laughs> and I think... And I think that, um, uh, you know, I don't think we value democracy enough. And I think there are two real dangers to it. One is there are people who basically suggest, and these are the people who are running things at the moment, you know, the technocrats and so on. They say, look what happened in Britain when we let ordinary people have a vote uh, in terms of Brexit. They left. They were ignorant, you know, or in Australia with the voice. There are people who kind of use the same argument. And increasingly, you're getting... On the technocratic side, people saying we don't need democracy. We should just be run by people who are inverted commas experts, you know, and, uh, you know, experts should say what's allowed on the media and and so on. Now, um, there's another danger. And the danger is that kind of ordinary people just get fed up and think, you know, uh, I remember a slogan once on a T-shirt, don't vote. It just only encourages them. Uh, (laughs) I mean, in, in Australia, 
I, I think it's good that you have compulsory voting, actually. I think that is that actually is excellent. OK, but that's I, in, that's interesting because, yeah, the UK and America voting is non-compulsory. And a lot of Aussies would say we should be like that, too, because forcing us to vote means that people who don't care and don't have an investment in the political system because they don't really research it enough are voting, but they're making a really uneducated vote. That's the counter argument, isn't it, that compulsory voting is bad? Yeah, although um, the, the argument that people who vote in the UK are, are particularly educated votes, you know. So, again, it depends what people mean by an educated vote. I mean, I find it interesting. People go, oh, they were uneducated. Um, and what they mean was they didn't go to university. But I remember going, for example, to the University of Sydney and, and being able to say to the group of students I was meeting with, um, you say you're a university, but I could tell what 90% of you think about basically every single issue because um, it's not I, I think a lot of what's happening in our universities is no longer uh, education it's indoctrination and you see that for example uh, Julia Gillard had an amazing article in the Australian about the ignorance of students over the history of Israel and this was causing a rise in anti-semitism and I, I, I think that's spot on and yet these people will go well I'm educated because I went to university and I got a degree and I'm saying yeah but when you chant from the river to the sea, you don't even know what the river is or the sea is. Yeah. You know, you don't know what it means. You don't understand that. So I, I wouldn't restrict voting to the educated. On the other hand, when someone has to vote, what I would say is, from a Christian perspective, anyway, we should we should vote. But I, I would argue that it, it at least forces us to research. So if I do my vote back in Scotland by proxy, uh, I am already writing off to all the candidates saying, you know, tell me your stance on these issues. Um, and we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So I think uh, Christians of all people should be active. I think we should be active in several ways. Uh, first of all, above all, uh, as Paul says to Timothy, we must pray for kings and those in authority. So we must pray for our politicians, whether we like them or not, whether we agree with their politics or not, we must pray. And secondly, I would say... Uh, we must take an active interest in the culture and the society in which we live. And, uh, and, it's, and therefore, I think it's good for us to be as informed as we can be. I would also say we need to be aware of the dangers. So we mustn't identify Christianity with one per particular political philosophy or political party. Um, I've known Christians who've been left wing, right wing, you know, all different kinds. Or, uh, and that's the same today. Um, there are Christians I know in Australia who are involved in politics in the Labour Party and the Liberal Party and the National Party and the Australian Party and others. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just think that we have an opportunity to be salt and light through the democratic system and we should take it. Yeah, absolutely. And isn't it interesting that Christians on either side of politics can be passionate and why they are supporting that side of politics and even use the Bible to justify it. But that's diversity and that's actually a, a good thing that we have that tension between the two sides of politics and the two viewpoints as long as um, both sides can actually agree together to, to live together in mm -hmm. harmony and unity. But um, just finally, um, what is your take on the UK now, David? I mean, it's, it's changed a lot, hasn't it? And um, what do you see for the next sort of 10 to 15 years for the UK? Okay, well, just a general thing with some things. Um, first of all, uh, I'm I'm actually part of my political views is I am Scottish and I, I did support Scottish independence. Uh, that is not going to happen um, it, within the next ten years. I'm pretty certain of that. Um, they've lost their opportunity for that. Uh, secondly, there is mass confusion in the UK about uh, various issues, and I suspect the big issues is the same as here. Um, climate change and net zero, there's a real pushback into that now. The whole question of immigration with a, 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 you know, an island that's got 65 million people in it, people are saying, well, hang on, you know, uh, uh, we've got this problem of wanting workers to do jobs that Brits won't do and yet not having the housing. That's a similar problem for many people in, in Australia. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a big issue. I think um, the... The trans issue uh, is massive, and it actually brought down the Scottish government, um, or at least the, the first minister. And I think the kind of woke issues, there's a pushback against them as well. What I hope 
is that uh, this doesn't lead to kind of extremes on either side. Um, I think that there's almost a sense in which the people who govern the country, it almost doesn't matter because they all appear to be roughly the same. So I'm hoping that we can get some decent leadership. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, there'll be much more Christian influence. And, and I, I guess this is the, the, the depressing bit. I think that uh, as the UK rejects its Christian heritage, it doesn't know what to replace it with. And it's getting massively confused. Um, and we've got people on the streets of UK cities, largely um, of a Muslim background, you know, chanting against Israel and bringing the politics of the Middle East to the UK. And I think that's happening across the Western world as well. And that's extremely concerning. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, it's in a broken society, it's only Christ that can heal. I think, by the way, Australia is in a better position. You're not as far down the road as the UK. So maybe it's time in Australia to say, no, no, we're not going to go that route. We don't want to go the way of America. We don't want to go the way of the UK. There must be an Australian way to maintain what I would call a Western liberal democracy founded on Christian principles. Yeah, well, that's going to require strong leadership here too, isn't it? That doesn't look yeah. to America or the UK. And my understanding is both of our major political parties look to both the US and the UK for inspiration yeah. and ideas and often the consultants that work in those spheres also come back and work here as well. But David, always fascinating talking to you. And uh, I think what we need is we need a, a few more John Knoxes in Scotland and a few more John Wesleys in, uh, in in Britain, in England, saying, God, give us Scotland or I die. Gee, that's what we need. But, um, yeah, thank yeah. you so much for joining us. If you want to uh, get in touch with David, his website is called The We Flea. That's W-E-E, flea.com. David Robinson, always good to listen to your wit and your intellect and your insights on what's going on, and especially today with this UK general election. Thank you. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.